materials are clips, bed sheets, and a lot of pillows. First, build some type of doorway. I did this. Next, use your pillows and build some type of wall so that you will never ever have to leave your fortification that you build. Well, I hope you learned something today on how to survive in your own house. Strawberry banana smoothie. So first you need frozen strawberries and bananas. And you're going to fill that up, two cups. So I got them right here. And you're going to put that in your blender, that's a lot. Um, next is the yogurt. You can add the yogurt. And you can add the yogurt. Just scoop it in. This is light and fit. And then next, you add some orange juice, right? I'm like scared, but like. Okay, so you can add some orange juice, it just depends how much you want. That's a lot. And then you can add some milk if you want to. The orange juice kind of makes it like soft, but you can add a little more milk. Okay. And then you put the top on. Oops. And you can start blending. When you think you're done blending, add it to your cup. And you're done. That's good. Contact by Mary H.K. Troy. It's a really good book. Judging by the cover, someone might just think it's a romantic book or just about romance, but it's a lot more than that, which is why I enjoyed it so much. Basically, it's about the two main characters, Sam and Penny. Uh, Penny has just left her pretty boring life back home to start college in Austin, at Austin, Tex in Austin, Texas, and Sam is stuck. It says in the book cover, literally, figuratively, emotionally, and financially. And he's just really trying to figure out what to do with his life. They're kind of forced together. Basically what happens is Penny sees him having a panic attack and she's kind of forced to take care of him. And then they swap numbers and she becomes his emergency contact because he doesn't really have anyone else to contact in emergencies. And they get to know each other more through text. It's pretty funny because they're both kind of awkward. So it's nice to see their interactions. What I like about it so much is that they both have really interesting pasts and it's not just talking about when they meet. So um, it's interesting to see them develop as separate characters and in a relationship. So I really recommend this because it has great character development and it's pretty fun. So I, but it's also, it's not just fun, it's 
also has more depth to it. So I do hope you check this out with an ebook maybe. It's a really good book, so I hope you read it and enjoy it. Our first book review for today is uh, The Perfect Score. The Perfect Score is written by Rob Buya. Buya is the author of uh, Mr. Turrup's series. So those of you that have enjoyed uh, reading that and going through that series, that's realistic fiction based on kind of a middle school perspective, I would highly recommend this. The Perfect Score takes place in a town um, where five students are living and they're starting middle school and they think that um, they're going to have a really great year because they got the really cool teacher, the popular teacher, the teacher that's supposed to, you know, everybody's always talked about except that when they get there, they find out that teacher had to move away and they have someone unexpected and they think it's going to be a horrible, rotten, no good year. And um, there are some hiccups and some bumps and obstacles to the year, um, but they end up kind of changing their minds, their identities and who they are themselves change. They see other people differently. They start seeing friendships and relationships differently. And so what you have are five different students. And so each chapter is a different perspective of these five students. And it all contributes to the story um, that is told throughout the entire thing of a situation that comes up where they're going to have to decide between versus doing what is wrong, what your heart tells you versus what your head tells you. Um, and when you follow your heart rather than your head, sometimes there are consequences and you have to deal with those consequences, even though what you did might be the right thing. So um, I think this is a very realistic book. I think it's perfect uh, for middle school. It describes people in middle school, the, the way that I think you see each other, the way I remember seeing people, um, you've got the perfectionist, you've got the person who's the teacher's pet, you've got kind of the class clown who doesn't, who tries to get things right, but never gets things right. You've got someone who might be perceived as a bully and someone who's not very nice. You've got the person who um, kind of decides they don't want to be friends with somebody, but based on, you know, the wrong information. And so um, this book kind of focuses on changing our mind about people and who they are and who we think they are and who our friends can be and, and who isn't our friend. And just kind of also then dealing with life because they all have school life and then they all have home life, just like all of you do. And sometimes those two things can make, um, can influence the others. Um, and, and that can be tough to deal with in middle school. So if you liked, uh, or are looking for middle grade, middle school situations, realistic fiction, I would recommend the perfect score. It is a series. So if you enjoy following these five students, you might enjoy continuing the series. Um, and again, this is the author of Mr. Turrup. For those of you who have read that and enjoyed it, I would definitely recommend the perfect score. Hello everybody, this is Christian here, back with three more riddles for this week's video announcements. Okay, let's go! So, for our first riddle, what has to be broken before you can use it? The answer? A egg. For our second riddle, what month of the year has 28 days? The answer? All of them. They all have 28 days. And for our final riddle, what has holes? but still holds water. The answer, a sponge. Thank you for joining in on this week's video announcements. And remember to wash your hands and stay safe. Welcome back to On This Day in History. On April 20, 2008, Danica Patrick won the IndyCar 300 and became the first woman to win an IndyCar event. On April 21, 1926, Queen Elizabeth II was born and is now currently 94. On April 22, 2016, 
the historic Paris Agreement was signed, which is considered one of the first global actions to slow climate change. On April 23, 2005, the first ever YouTube video was posted. The video was a man going to the San Diego Zoo. On April 24, 2005, Pope Benedict XVI officially became the Pope. On April 25, 1859, construction of the Suez Canal began. On April 26, 1607, Jamestown, the first permanent English settlement, was found. In honor of Robert Downey Jr.'s 55th birthday, I'm counting down the top five facts about Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. Number five. The character of Tony Stark was actually based off of a billionaire named Howard Hughes back in 1963. Number four. During the production of the 2008 movie Iron Man, Tom Cruise was almost casted to play Tony Stark instead of Robert Downey Jr. Number three. Robert Downey Jr. is also known for his singing ability, and even released his own album called The Futurist. And number two. Tony Stark and Iron Man have the most screen time of any character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And at number one, Robert Downey Jr. was almost casted to play another billionaire superhero, Batman, in the 1989 movie. However, the role was given to Michael Keaton, who eventually would play the Vulture in Spider-Man Homecoming, which Robert Downey Jr. was also a part of. Well, it looks like we've run out of time, but those were my top five facts about Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man in honor of his 55th birthday. Five Fun Facts Animal Edition Did you know an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain? Did you know a kangaroo can fart? Did you know a sloth is so slow it takes two weeks to digest its food? Did you know a cow produces nearly 200,000 glasses of milk in their lifetime? And last but not least, did you know a snail can sleep for nearly three years? Today's word of the day is ebullient. It means to be cheerful and full of energy. This word used in a sentence is the girl was ebullient after receiving good news. The word of the day is coruscant. It means glittering or sparkling. A use for it is her diamond necklace was coruscant under the bright lights. Word of the day. Today's word of the day is sexicoline, meaning living or growing on or among rocks. Examples include moss or even Patrick Starr.